Hey, welcome. It's good to see all of you. I can't really see you, but you know what I mean. It's good to have you here to take a look at uh, uh, some of the things that we talk about on the following Sunday. Um, this past Sunday was the second uh, Sunday after Pentecost, so we're still in that season where we are, are talking about the Holy Spirit, about the power of the Holy Spirit, about uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Trinity. And so yesterday, on, on Sunday, we focused on uh, uh, kind of like three parts making the point of, uh, we, of, of Matthew's writing in the uh, ninth chapter and verses uh, 9 through 12 and then from there to the end of the chapter. What, what we find out of verses 18 through 26, not necessarily end of the chapter, but what we find out in this particular section, and we use the, the topic health, sickness, and power. And it, it really, um, when you look deeper at this, we're talking about uh, the health in terms of spiritual health, not necessarily physical health. And then we're talking about sickness, not in the sense of, of guaranteed healing from sickness, but Jesus demonstrating who he is in relations to uh, the power that he has. And then third, we talked about uh, the power that Jesus uses in uh, connection with us, bringing us closer to him by his own power. So here's what we did. We talked about uh, Matthew, and Matthew is the writer of this particular gospel. We know that he, we identified him as being that writer. But Matthew, in the ninth chapter, uh, he, he talks about, uh, as Jesus went from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a tax collector's booth, and he said to him, follow me, and he told him, as he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. Now, what's interesting about this is the gospel writers often write themselves into the gospel, not necessarily calling themselves by name, but Matthew does this. But the, the part that's interesting is he, he, the way that he labeled himself. If I was writing about me, I am always paint myself in a great picture. But Matthew doesn't do that. He says Matthew was a tax collector. And we know that the tax collectors were lumped in the same group as people who they labeled as sinners. They were not good people. They were at the bottom of the bottom of society, and they were considered renegades because they had left their Jewish roots and started hanging out with uh, doing what the Roman government, Roman society wanted them to do in collecting taxes. And so that's why we hear um, uh, them saying, well, why does your, your teacher eat with sinners and tax collectors? Because they are lumping them together, saying that neither group is good. What Jesus does is remarkable. He goes and eats with Matthew, and then when he hears the Pharisees complaining, Jesus says, on hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who needs a doctor, but the sick. And so he makes this this physical play on words using uh, meaning a spiritual connotation. He says, listen, if you're healthy, you don't need a doctor, but if you're sick, you need a doctor. And then he says, I did not come for the, 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 the righteous, but I came for the unrighteous or for the sinners to be in a relationship with them. Matthew goes on from there and he makes point number two in that Jesus demonstrates his power over, over sickness. There was a guy who came along by the name of Jars, who is not identified in Matthew's gospel, and Jars says to Jesus, my daughter is sick, can you help her? And Jesus begins to go with his daughter, and then, lo and behold, some woman comes behind him and says to herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. She touches Jesus, draws power from him. In another gospel, Jesus says, who touched me? And his disciples say, man, all these people around you who touch you, what's wrong with you? But it's his power, the power that Jesus has to heal. Now, here's the other thing that's difficult. He's not guaranteeing healing on this side, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Never does the Bible guarantee healing 
on this side. But if we receive it, we receive it and take it. But if not, we trust God in the midst of whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. The last thing I want to point out is uh, what we consider as, as the good news or some of the good news in this chapter. Um, Jesus goes home to the, the, the uh, religious leader's house, to Jairus' house, the synagogue leader, and he finds that his daughter is, is, is sleeping as he refers to it. And the people laugh at Jesus or they mock Jesus. Jesus says, I already know what I'm going to do. He has the power to announce things. And he, he says that this girl is not dead, but she is sleeping because he knows what he is going to do. Jesus has all authority and all power because he is creator God. And so at the end of this story, Jesus puts the crowd out. He goes in and takes the girl by her hand and she gets up and he, he says this um, at the end of this lesson, at the end of, of chapter, uh, it says, now news of this spread throughout all the region. And what we took from that is the power of God in our lives. We ought to be willing to go out and tell someone what God is actively doing in and through each of our lives. So we have uh, health, sickness, and power. Go out and share that good news with someone, my sisters and brothers in Christ. See you the next time. Amen? Amen.